Guys, welcome back. Well, I took a long time of rest and I'm back after a long time to discuss with you about the most important process which rules the Android developer world and that is called as routing. Well, um, most of the Android users should have heard this word routing but most of the Android users don't know what's mean by this word routing and I'm here to explain you about what's routing and what is the technology behind that routing and what are the advantages of routing and what are the drawbacks of routing and what that routing is actually gonna do inside your device and what you can do with your device after routing so uh, even I'm a little confused with my dialogues so don't never mind that now let us step into the explanation process. Here it comes. Well, um, in Windows operating system you should have seen this. There are two types of users. Uh, one user is called the standard user and the other user is called as the administrator. In the same way, Android operating system also has two types of user and one user is called as normal user, we call it like that and the other user is basically called a super user or privileged user well uh, in windows a standard user has only limited number of privileges and a standard user is restricted to do certain actions to prevent security threats uh, for example a standard user is allowed to access files in a system but he or she who is acting as a standard user cannot access files inside the system drive and at the same time a standard user cannot install software to the windows system and the standard user cannot uninstall software from the windows system in the same way there are several privileges given to the super user and after rooting your device you become the super user for your device um, routing is so basically we call it as I call it as and you can also call it as the method of breaking internal security of Android device to gain super user permissions and uh, the next question which comes to every user's mind is how to root your Android device uh, routing your Android device is not that complex process uh, as days passed by the routing process has been made so easier than before well, in some cases, uh, routing is done in different methods. Uh, the routing process actually differs from device to device. In case if you are having a Samsung device, Samsung Galaxy S6, then the routing process differs when compared to Samsung Galaxy S4. In the same way, routing differs from operating system to operating systems too. Um, in case of KitKat, you route your device in some way and in case of lollipop you should go to some other way in order to route your device well routing can be easily performed by using third party softwares like uh, unlock root pro and why not even routing can be easily done in some low secure devices using a routing app downloaded from play store so routing is not so that difficult routing is just an easy process nowadays well the next thing is in case of some devices uh, if you take Samsung as an example or Nexus as an example or Sony Xperia whatever it may be um, in case of Samsung Xperia and Nexus the uh, device manufacturers are basically called as OEM original equipment manufacturers they have their own copy of custom boot operating system so they too have their own custom boot bootloaders a bootloader is a system file or a system module which boots up your operating system along with the kernels and all other system files. Mm. If your major course in engineering is IT or CSE then you should have definitely known this. Uh, I studied more than 7 pages to get 16 marks in my lower grade exam about this bootloader so I hate this bootloader. Um, in such original equipment manufacturer devices basically you need to unlock the blue uh, what to say break the security to unlock the bootloader 
unlocking the bootloader is easier in some devices and it is tedious or difficult in other devices. Well, but in such locked bootloader system, you cannot root your device without unlocking the device. Without unlocking the device, routing is impossible because a locked bootloader will allow only digitally signed system files to start during system boot. So, after routing, your device may have unsigned digital, uh, how to say that, um, after routing, some of the files in your device which helps to attain super user privileges will not be signed digitally so such files will not be allowed to boot up uh, in a locked bootloader system so you need to unlock your bootloader uh, that's it then the next thing is when it comes to routing uh, the technology of routing has seen several evolutions from operating system to operating systems or from device to device or from years to years when Lollipop came first time into the market, most of the developers felt difficult to root it. But now, you can root each and every Lollipop device using a universal method. Uh, in that universal method, first you need to unlock your bootloader, then you need to flash the custom recovery to the device. Then after that, you should need the necessary root files to a device through that recovery module. Well, recovery modules are advanced things when compared to this uh, routing and all. Uh, in case of Android ICS Ice Cream Sandwich, before when it was released, I think it was released two, three years, four years before I think so. In such systems, the routing is done using uh, a software which can be easily done. but in case of Jelly Bean, the security of the devices are improved, so the developers need to go to another option for routing the device. And when it came to uh, KitKat, the method was even more complicated, so they adopted another method to root the device. And when it came to Lollipop, they invented a new universal method to read the device. So some of the devices, as I said before, may need unlocking the bootloader. That's it. In advancement in routing, then the main thing is. Uh, what are the privileges gained by router user or super user? Uh, in case of a normal user, the normal user can do only certain allowed things, but a super user can utilize the complete send person open source feature of your Android device. Next. Privileges gained by router user. Well, a rooted user can, as I said before, can do whatever he wants with his Android device. Uh, in case uh, of several devices, if you take your Samsung as example, uh, it has several system inbuilt apps like uh, S Play or S Games, S Browse, S Search, uh, etc., etc., etc. And some of the users feel that those things are unnecessary files load into the device. So in case if a user wants to uninstall those system files or system apps, no, a normal user can't do that. But a super user can do it just in two clicks. That's the important privilege gained by a super user. And in case uh, in case if the user wants to improve the performance of his device, then yeah you can install several performance booster apps. But if you want to make your device perform more and more faster than it can be made possible by using some performance tweaks or tweak files. Those things are flashed into your device or written into your device after routing. Next thing is memory swapping. Um, I had made a video long ago about this topic memory swapping. In case if your device internal memory is less then you can increase it by swapping a partition of memory from your memory card or SD card. Uh, if your SD card is 32 GB and if your internal memory is only 6 GB and in case if you want to expand your internal memory then you can do it easily by just swapping a partition of memory from your SD card and you can install your apps to that partition made in the SD card. Then the next to most important thing is custom ROM flashing. Most of the devices has a blurry or boring system interface. 
uh, the user interface will be a lot boring and it will not make you more interesting to interact with your devices. In such cases, you can make your device uh, more interesting and you can make your device look more amazing by flashing a custom ROM. Custom ROMs are developed by high-tech developers, high-tech Android developers and if you are a custom, uh, sorry, and if you are a technically improved advanced developer then you may also develop your own version of custom ROM and you can flash it in your device after rooting it. Cust whatever you want. The next thing is the most important thing. When you go to Play Store, some of the apps like screen recording apps, screenshot apps, uh, when if you are a Clash of Clans player then you should have heard of XMOD and that XMOD will not perform in your device without rooting. So in such cases you need rooting to install Supreme Mod apps or root apps, the apps which need super user permission. And these are the most important privileges gained by a rooted user and in addition to that there are even more privileges but I cannot exp uh, explain all those things in this single video. The next thing is the most dangerous part of rooting. Yeah, everything has a negative part and even rooting has a negative part. Rooting has only some drawbacks but those drawbacks are not little drawbacks. They can even lead your device to be dead. The first drawback is uh, the avoidance of warranty. Uh, I will explain it now. In case if you are having a rooted device and if your device is a new device and if your device has 2 years warranty or 3 years warranty then after rooting you cannot even claim for your warranty because after rooting your device becomes your own device and you cannot take your device to the manufacturer to claim the warranty. Even if the warranty is claimable, you cannot claim it to the manufacturer with a rooted device. Then the next most dangerous drawbacks of all is a bricked device. In case if you don't know how to root your device and if you don't know what are the files needed to root your device and you don't know how to root your device and if you are taking action to root your device without proper knowledge and in case if you mess up with that you can even lead your device to be a big device. A big device is a device with a corrupted operating system. It will not even start even if you press the power button so hard like Hulk, it will not even start. Note this point. If you want to do the device, then be careful and be proper in choosing the files and choose the proper set of softwares and tools necessary to root your device. So don't mess up with your device, don't mess up with rooting and make your device dead. Uh, these are the main drawbacks of rooting. Then who needs rooting? Well, most of the users have this doubt. Uh, do I need rooting? Or uh, do he need rooting? And in case if you want to know if you need rooting or not, then these are the criteria which I will show you that makes that makes a clear point to you about the users who need rooting. In case if you want to explore uh, a lot about your Android device, then definitely you need rooting. Without rooting. You cannot do anything in your device and you cannot play with your device. The same way as said before, a custom room development. To develop and to flash a custom room, you need to root your device. These are the main advantages of rooting. And even if you are a common user who don't know anything about technology like me, you can even use your device to use some root apps like uh, screenshot apps, screen recorder apps, like some game mode apps, etc. 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 Mm, that's it guys these are the steps and the technology and the so on so on so on etc 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 involved in the shooting process and if you want to root your device be careful and after rooting your device enjoy with your android device thanks for watching guys bye